Hi, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Uh, my name is Virendra Sharma, and I'm a partner uh, with TPA Global, and I'm based out of Amsterdam. Uh, we are pleased to uh, conduct this uh, uh, session on Brazil, uh, and the topic of discussion we have today is uh, the shaping the tax future of MNCs with operations in Brazil. And uh, this topic will be uh, taken by uh, my colleague Paulo Bento, who is a tax head with BMNA Tax in Brazil. And uh, BMNA Tax is an alliance, uh, alliance member to TPA Global, and the TPA Global uh, has uh, a member and alliances in almost 60 countries. And uh, we, we deal in all uh, tax areas, includes, including international tax, direct tax, indirect tax, and also in, in, in area of uh, uh, finance. Uh, this topic is uh, very important, especially uh, when we are seeing there have been some developments uh, coming from the OECD uh, in terms of uh, their action plan. And Brazil being part of BRICS countries, uh, any positions taken by the tax authorities or the kind of transfer pricing system Brazil has that will have an important bearing on other countries. And it is also very important to understand the trust pricing system in Brazil, especially when Brazil is the largest economy in Latin America with the GDP of close to $2.2 trillion. So uh, in today's topic, my colleague Paulo will cover how relevant is this transfer pricing system in Brazil is in terms of the transfer pricing methodology followed uh, in, in Brazilian tax rules and also what level of markups the Brazilian tax authority and system expect from MNCs in, in, in Brazil. And there are a very peculiar way of maintaining documentation and justifying arms length pricing in Brazil. So it is very important for an MNC to understand how the TP system operates and works in Brazil because in some way uh, they will experience it uh, different from what they see if they are coming from the other part, part of the world, for example from US or from Europe or Asia. Uh, before we start this presentation, I would like to mention some important housekeeping rules. Uh, if you have any question, you can you can raise this question by writing uh, and by checking the box, and you can uh, send a text, and uh, which we will pick up this question uh, uh, one time in the middle of the presentation and second time at the end of the presentation. Uh, and uh, we will be recording this session so that if you want to revisit this uh, webinar, you can do it almost after the week of this recording, after the week of this presentation. Uh, and uh, during the presentation, if you have any problem in hearing the presentation, you can also dial in, and the dial-in details are provided to you uh, when you are registering for this presentation. So with this background, uh, I'm pleased to give the floor to my colleague, Paulo Bento, who will take you through this important topic today. Okay, Hello. thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody. I, I know that we have people from all over the world. And um, to talk about transfer price in Brazil is always a kind of a challenge because uh, Brazil follows, uh, I may say, a different approach in comparison to the, the international community. It's something that uh, we do not expect to change in the near future. So whenever we talk about uh, 
tax future, specifically transfer pricing. Uh, we may say that Brazilian authorities are following all the develop developments abroad. They are aware of what is happening abroad, uh, bad uh, transparency, specifically with respect to transparency, I, I believe uh, Brazilian authorities are committed with that. But whenever we talk about the transfer pricing, uh, it seems to, in any discussion we have, that uh, they are very uh, committed in, in, in keeping following the same approach. Uh, sometimes it seems that they are even proud of their approach because uh, now we, we have heard that other jurisdictions of course, not uh, the most developed jurisdictions are, are looking for similar uh, transfer pricing structures with respect to the one we have here in Brazil. It's always important to remember that Brazil, Brazil is not a member of the OECD, but as I said, uh, Brazil tries to, to keep updated with, with all the developments with respect to that. Well, uh, talking a little bit about, about transfer pricing rules in Brazil, uh, what we have here in Brazil is methods that are supposedly inspired by the OECD methods. Basically, they adopted similar, the same names, translated into Portuguese, uh, but with a major peculiarity. Uh, whenever we talk about the, the Brazilian transfer pricing methods, we are talking about methods that economic, generally, uh, function analysis, economic analysis, and even comparability are, are not in the center of these methods. So, although the methods may seem to be similar, uh, may have the same name, in fact, we have a very different results from the application of these methods and uh, a very different uh, reasoning behind the application of these methods. Because authorities are not looking for arm's length uh, profit margins, they are looking for a certain portion of the transaction or a certain price of the transaction being uh, established in order to avoid major uh, tax avoidance in Brazil. Why I said major? Because as you will see, we are always talking about something that is not based on economic reality. So, uh, of course, may lead to, to firstly, to, to tax adjustments in Brazil, even in case the, the, the companies are dealing at arm's length. On the other hand, may give rise to, to tax avoidance because the methods, they allow certain kind of uh, profit shifting based on the fact that there are a, a very formal rules that are not based on the, the arm's length. Just a second, please. Well, as I, I was saying... So we are on yes. slide number three now. Sorry? Uh, until we are on slide number three now. Yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, I moved now to, 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 to start following these slides. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, as I was saying that uh, methods in Brazil are supposedly inspired in OECD methods, but uh, the main difference is that they rely on fixed markups and fixed margin rates that are fixed by law. The law establishes these profit rates that must be used with each of the methods. Benchmark analysis are only applicable to the methods based on the comparison that are the similar methods similar to CUP 
and a method that we call in Brazil a commodities method. That is a, 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 a recent method that was issued by authorities in order to, to close a door that was opened for several tax planning. I will get back to that at the time we talk about the commodities method, but uh, uh, based on the fact that uh, we had fixed profit margins in order to, to apply transfer pricing rules, with, with respect to, to commodities, it was easy to, to, to have an arbitrage with respect to this, these prices and to shift the profit that should be recognized in Brazil to a, a, a low tax uh, jurisdiction. So this was something that was very common and it took basically seven years for tax authorities to, to close this door. Uh, but there, are, there, there is a clear purpose with respect to, to these methods and the, the, the path followed by Brazilian authorities. It's to simplify tax audits. They recognize that they, they are not able, they don't have enough resources or the investment is too high uh, to, to shift, to move to the OECD environment. So the economic studies, uh, the tax audits, the control of pricing, transfer pricing with respect to an OECD environment, it would be too cost and too complex for the authorities in Brazil. So uh, the they, they intent was to follow the international movement in order to, to control transfer pricing, to have rules on that. They were not willing to, to leave this without any kind of control, but they have, they, they have chosen a, a simplified approach that uh, is far from, from being compatible with, with a uh, arm's length principle. Although this is something that is very interesting here in Brazil, tax authorities, if you ask them and if any manifestation they have, they, they believe so. They believe that the Brazilian methods are compatible with arm's length. The fact that the, the profit margins are fixed by law for them is not something that deviate, deviates Brazilian rules from the arm's length principle. Because theoretically, these methods, uh, they, they should have a, a, an economic, uh, economic reason to, to be there. It's, it, it's easy to see that this is not correct because until uh, recently, uh, for most of the methods, we had a single profit margin for any of industries, companies, activities, the size, nothing was relevant for that. So this for sure cannot be considered in, in accordance with arm's length principle. Uh, Paulo, uh, one point I want to uh, raise here is that when we look at today BAP's action plan and uh, you know, the development which is happening uh, across the globe in international tax, uh, uh, in particularly in transfer pricing, uh, function analysis is now a backbone of, uh, of transfer pricing position taken by the MNCs. Now, when I look at Brazil's situation where we have fixed markup, however, each uh, multinational corporation has specific facts. So, are we saying that function analysis is very, very less relevant in Brazil. Uh, and if the company had, if the company complies with a specific markup prescribed by Brazilian tax law, then the company is not required to do a, a, a detailed function analysis. Yeah, the company is, is never obliged to do function analysis. And we will see ahead uh, the company may use whatever method that leads to the lowest tax adjustments. This is something that uh, uh, it's a peculiarity in Brazil. Instead of, uh, we don't have a best method rule or an economic reason behind the, the choice for a method. So uh, the company, uh, the, let's say the company may, may, may comply with Brazilian transfer pricing rules, 
even if he's applying a method that has no connection whatsoever to the, the, the situation specifically considered. Okay. Okay. Well, let's move. Let's start with import transactions. Uh, well, for Brazilian transfer pricing purpose, an import transaction is the purchase of goods, services, or rights from suppliers abroad. Uh, the methods we have are the cost plus markup. It's basically the cost plus. Uh, it's a cost plus markup, but uh, this method is based on the weighted average production cost of identical or similar products or services in the exporter's jurisdiction, okay? Plus, underlining taxes and duties charged by such jurisdiction in export transactions, and a markup, a fixed markup of 20% on the assessed cost. One thing that is important, this method is not very common in Brazil, because tax authorities require a very detailed report containing the amount of each item included in the cost. So uh, why uh, multinational enterprises, they don't use these methods? Because they don't want to provide to the authorities in Brazil uh, the cost structure they have abroad. So although this is a very simple method to apply, the profit margin may be good or not <laughs> in this will depend on your activity, but it's 20% in any activity. But the problem with respect to these methods we see in practice is the, the, the companies, they don't want to use these methods because they don't want to provide a cost to tax authorities in Brazil uh, in order to avoid a, a, to have this, this kind of structure being disclosed here in Brazil to competitors and so on. They don't rely, actually they don't rely on the authorities in Brazil. So this is why we don't see uh, the application of this method very often in import transactions. And the resale price less markup is the most commonly used method in Brazil. And why is that? It's the opposite with respect to cost plus because the company in Brazil is able to apply this method without relying on data from any other source. So uh, there has been a, a change in 2013. Since then, the method is calculated as the difference between the participation of the imported goods, service or rights in the final sale price and the corresponding profit margin. Uh, the profit margins are determined according to the economic sector of the company. Here we don't have only one uh, profit margin. We have two <laughs> for, for all the, the economic sector, sectors. Um, subject to transfer price control, regardless of whether the imported goods are used in the production process in Brazil. Well, talk about a little bit about how to apply these methods. As a general rule, the parameter price is computed as, uh, first, it's calculated as the ratio be between the weighted average cost of the imported goods, services, and rights, and the weighted average total cost of the goods manufactured or resold services or rights. So I need to establish a proportion between what is important, imported and the total cost. Uh, such a ratio, is applied on the weighted average sales price of goods manufactured or resold in Brazil. And to the results obtained between these, these two calculations, a fixed profit margin is deducted, and the remaining amount is equal to the parameter price. The current profit margins uh, vary from a maximum of 40% to a minimum of 20% depending on the segment of the industry of the import company. So we have a variation between 40 and 20, 
gross profit margin to deduct from the, the sales price, of course, the portion of the sales price calculated between the average of costs, imported costs and local costs. I apply this on the, the sales price and deduct the profit margin. Uh, in the past, this profit margin has been 6% for man manufacturers in Brazil, and probably the, the, the participants here that are within, for example, pharmaceutical industry, they know that how impossible it was to comply with this 6% profit margin. It was um, too high for several industries, and one that was very affected by, by this high profit margin was the pharmaceutical industry. And the third method is the CUP, the Comparison Control Prices. In Brazil, this method is based on the comparison between the import price and the weighted average price adopted. And, and we have a few options here. The, price, the, the weighted average price adopted by the exporter abroad in identical or similar transactions with non-related parts. This is one option by the importer in Brazil in identical or similar transactions with other non-related suppliers, or in identical or similar transactions between other non-related suppliers or buyers. What's not easy in Brazil uh, to find unless we are talking about commodities. Uh, information that is acceptable by tax authorities uh, usually are, is information in the public domain, and this information in Brazil usually is what we have in the open market. So after they, they established these commodity markets uh, uh, methods, uh, the commodity methods uh, most of the times apply circumstances that you, you have uh, prices in the open market. Uh, hello, uh, when I look at the first two methods, which is cost plus and the sale price, and where we have uh, a particular markup given. Now, uh, if, I, if I have understood correctly, uh, you know, these markups are given and function analysis is not so important here. But when we apply a cup method where we, are, we have external cup or internal cup, then w what is your opinion that in case of cup, uh, is the taxpayer required to do a, a very detailed comparison of functions and also of the features of the products? Yeah, uh, basically uh, the comparison is made uh, in a product by product basis. Okay, it's not based on function analysis. It's basically what they consider similar or identical products. So. There is no clear definition of that, uh, but they are looking for, especially the same, the very same, the same, very same product in a different transaction that involves no related parties. This is the ideal situation that they are looking for here. If you have have products that may be, have very similar characteristic characteristics, we may say that. Uh, uh, we could use that, but it's very difficult to say about functional analysis here because we will not be able to compare uh, based on that. The tech authorities in Brazil will, will not accept this. They are very, they have a very formal approach with respect to that. Okay. So, uh, the, the difference, what do you need to adjust? Uh, payment conditions and term conditions of the transaction especially maturity date and corresponding interest, uh, brokered fees, interest including price, price, insurance, this is what they allow to adjust. So unless you have a, a identical product or a very, very similar product, you will not be able to use uh, these methods. If you have, for example, a TV, you will not be able to compare a TV uh, in principle of one brand with another, unless you are able to prove that the product is, is basically the same and uh, with different brands. Okay. Well, 
let's go to the export transactions. Of course, the export transactions, the, 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 the authorities in Brazil, they want to stimulate the ex exports. So the profit margins tend to be lower. So it's usually easier to comply with uh, the methods whenever we are, talk we are talking about exports. We have, for export purposes, we basically have three methods, but one of the methods is divided in two that uh, we are talking about, uh, uh, depending on the market, wholesale market or retail market with respect to, to, to the, 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 the wholesale price less margin or retail price less margin. But let's go through one by one. We have, of, of course, the cost plus that is based on the wages, the average production or acquisition cost of the goods, services, or rights, plus underlying taxes charged in Brazil, if any. There are a lot of incentives in Brazil for export, so uh, it's not uncommon to, 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 don't, you know, to find circumstances whenever uh, there, there are no tax applicable. And markup of 15% on the sum of the assessed cost and the value obtained uh, based on this, the sum of uh, taxes. So here we are talking about a cost plus of 15. For purpose of import, we are talking about 20. We also have uh, the wholesale price less margin. Uh, that basically the weighted average sale price of identical or similar goods in the wholesale market of the jurisdiction of the purchaser abroad, deducted by taxes due in such jurisdiction, and a profit margin of 15% on the wholesale uh, price. We have basically the same applied to retail price, but in this case, the profit margin is 30%. Because, of course, we are talking about higher prices, we are change the, 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 the price that we are using to deduct the, 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 the margin, so it's twice the margin we, we should consider for wholesale. Again, a single profit margin for each of these methods. You don't have a profit margin for, for example, a manufacturer of pharmaceutical products or a manufacturer of TVs. You, you need to apply exactly the same margin. And also, here we have the comparison, the, the, a cup that is called TVEX here in Brazil. It's a comparison between uncontrolled prices uh, that is based on the comparison between the export price and the weighted average sale price adopted by the Brazil exported in identical or similar transactions with non-related parties, or by other Brazil exporter with no related parts in identical or similar transactions in the same period and under the same payment conditions. This is required by law. Uh, well, and Paulo, if you, if you look at the market dynamics, you know, there are changes from one year to another. So what we have in 14, you know, in year 14, in 2015, we will have different market dynamics. So, do we see these markups, uh, they change year on year or they remain constant for a block of period? Now, it, this has been changed because uh, the, the, the taxpayers have been complaining a lot, have been complaining a lot since the, the, the whole rule in Brazil was issued. There is a, a, a characteristic of the rule that I will talk about later that the law prescribes a possibility for a change in profit margin. It's a kind of ruling. The taxpayer could go to the tax authorities in order to, to prove that its profit margin is different from the one fixed by law. But since 1996, so almost uh, 20 years ago, uh, we don't know a single case where tax authorities allowed a taxpayer to change the profit margin. So this is, is prescribed by Brazilian law, but if you have a, you file a, a, 
a requirement like this, they simply don't answer. This is the, the common uh, solution they adopt. Sometimes they answer saying no because they don't believe that it was proven that that was that the profit margin was suitable. But uh, there are very few cases where taxpayers they try to do that, and uh, no one succeeds. Okay. Well, as I said, there are now specific methods for commodities based on the quoted prices in the, the, the open market. Why was this created? Because most of the, the, the exporters in Brazil of commodities, uh, they created a trading company abroad and they complied with uh, Brazilian transfer pricing rules. For example, cost plus, cost, cost plus 15, and the price in the international markets was much higher. Was, for example, equivalent to cost plus 100, <laughs> to give an exaggerated example. So the difference between this 15 and 100, the 85% was kept abroad uh, without being taxed in Brazil. Of course, there are other things that were considered. We have CFC and so on. But there, in, in most of the cases, they succeeded by at least being able to postpone taxation in Brazil. So tax authorities, seeing that, they closed this door by establishing that at least for uh, commodities, the, 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 the company, the taxpayer in Brazil is obliged to, to adopt the, the market price. The, the, well, we also have uh, met, not methods, but rules for interest for low and debt transactions in Brazil. Uh, also fixed by law, we have a maximum or minimum, depending on the direction of the, the debt transaction, maximum and minimum uh, amounts of interest that may, may be deducted or a minimum amount that should be recognized as uh, revenue in Brazil. In any case, uh, you, 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 we, you, you use the Brazilian bonds uh, as reference for, for determining the interest rate. And a spread may be, in case of a payment to abroad, may be added and must be added in case of a recognition of interest uh, revenues in Brazil. So depending on if you have revenue, interest revenues, you need to add a spread of 2.5%. If you have a, a express a payment of interest from Brazil to abroad, you may add up to 3.5%. We also have other control, other rules to control debt level in Brazil. We have fin capitalization rules in Brazil that controls uh, the, the equity debt ratio, but both uh, rules, transfer pricing rules and uh, fin cap, they apply uh, together. One limits the amount of interest, and another one limits the amount of debt you may have in Brazil. Oh. With respect to documentation, this is something that, uh, at least in, in theory, should be easier in Brazil. This is the intent of tax authorities. So if it is easy for tax authorities to control, to prepare everything, uh, it's also supposedly uh, easier to, for taxpayers to, to do that. There is no specific file report you need to, to have. Usually the companies, they, they prepare uh, the calculations that are very formal uh, in a spreadsheet or in, in any virtual mean. And they are, taxpayers are, now they are only required to transmit information uh, regarding their compliance with transfer pricing rules along with their annual income tax return. 
we are in the middle of a, 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 a huge change in Brazil. Everything is being converted into electronic uh, and, and online information. So uh, the income tax return is about to, to, to be extinguished. The, the tax authority will receive electronically, basically online, they already receive. The Brazilians that are probably in this call, they, they know that, that you need to provide, you need to, to, to upload in the, the, their program several information in monthly basis. So in a near future, uh, it will be almost everything online. The information will be fully available for tax authorities at any time. This is uh, their intent at least. So there is, in any case, you need to you upload information, you need to, to have a control to show how, in many cases, how you were able to get to that specific price. Uh, of course, the operational documents, you use all the documentation you, you, you used to, to prepare the calculations in order to do that. Well, uh, so there is a question that uh, we are talking so, about. So, uh, can, we, can we pause for a moment, just uh, check if the audience has any question? Sure. Uh, so, uh, as I said in the beginning, if you have any question, you can check the box. You can ask your question as a text, and then we will uh, address your question uh, uh, in this call. Although there is one question uh, which is uh, on this method, profit split method. Now, when we look at this Brazil, we have uh, traditional methods, uh, but there can be occasions where a company is, on, is owning intangibles. It's more like a profit center, uh, and it's a Brazilian company, and uh, that company may be incurring losses in Brazil because uh, it's a profit center and it can have profits as well as losses. So what is your experience? Uh, how tax authorities will look at these loss cases in Brazil? And we have a, a kind of a positive markup uh, prescribed. Tax yeah. uh, authorities currently, tax authorities don't, don't, I will call, don't have this sophistication uh, they don't look to that. They basically they, they have chosen to apply a formal method, and whenever you have a circumstance that the, the, the a payment complies with Brazilian transfer pricing rules, you are okay. If you you don't comply, you need to adjust the amount. We, we if they don't see uh, the characteristics of the transaction, if the transactions could be making losses or profits at this point in time based on its strategy, uh, if there is a connection with another uh, business outside Brazil, and we should uh, split, have uh, adopted the, the non-traditional, the transactional methods, non-traditional as profit split. Uh, so this is not something that uh, is a concern in Brazil right now. Okay. One thing that is important is only that uh, for intangibles, we have a specific legislation that limits the deductibility to a certain amount of the revenues uh, recognized in Brazil with respect to these intangibles. So depending on the specific circumstance in a case-by-case -case basis, but we have a uh, uh, rules that may be considered more specific than the transfer pricing rules and should apply in a case where intangibles are involved. But it's basically this applies for royalties payments, payments, any payments for license uh, and related payments, for services, uh, your acquisition of intangible, uh, in principle, we should apply one of the methods. And uh, when you, whenever you have a cost plus, you, you are able to apply a cost plus in a circumstance like this, you can do 
basically whatever you want because you don't use to need to adopt the market value. You may use the cost as basis. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the next question is that uh, what is the basis uh, of uh, this fixed markup calculation? Well, uh, it, it's not. Uh, it's not clear what is behind the fixed margin, uh, why they, they have chosen these specific profit margins, what we believe they probably made calculations on how much uh, they, they should avoid being shifted to abroad. It's not based on the, the activities of the companies in Brazil. I doubt that. Uh, they, they basically they made a, a, a statistic on how much they they would be deriving here in Brazil as tax authorities in case they adopted a, a margin or another after several huge problems with several industries here in Brazil they changed the profit margins for 40 to 20 percent. <coughs> this was required by, by certain industry sectors also. So with respect to resale, specifically only with respect to resale price for imports, this is basically also based on what certain industries in Brazil required to the tax authorities. They proved that as, as an industry, that the profit margin that was established was completely unrealistic and was causing severe damages to the, the, the companies here in Brazil. But uh, there is no, nothing more than that, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, I have, uh, we have got another question, uh, Paulo, and the question is that if a U.S. company having a subsidiary in Brazil in that case, how the operating, how the operating, uh, operating, and this company is operating on revenue sharing model and reporting losses in its financials, right? So, can fiscal authority change the TP method to cost plus? So, the question here is that there is a U.S. company uh, who is having a subsidiary in Brazil. And their intercompany pricing model is based on the sharing of revenue. So if 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 they have hundred dollars of revenue, say sixty dollars, I'm just taking an assumption, sixty dollars is kept by US, forty dollars by Brazil, but that results in losses for the Brazil. So can the fiscal authority in Brazil change the TP method to cost plus so that the Brazilian company is back in profit? Yeah. What happens in, whenever tax authorities uh, in an tax audit here in Brazil? Uh, tax authorities, they will be able to challenge, but they will need to apply one of the Brazilian methods, okay, with the information available to them. So if they are able to apply the cost plus, they have information to do that, uh, and the cost plus and if the company has not adopted any of the methods, tax authorities will be able to enforce and to collect a, a potential taxes on the cost plus methods. What we need to, to, to have clear is that in Brazil, they will see if you have applied one of the Brazilian methods. They, they, do not, they will not consider any of the economic reasoning even in cases is based on arms length, is completely based on the arms length, they always look to the rule. And the rule they look that very formally. They will look well, the rule says that the profit margin is fifteen, you may adopt these three methods. And if you you are not adopting any of the methods, I will do that, I can do that, the tax authors can do that and to, to charge potential difference. But uh, Paulo, in case of losses, you know, I cannot uh, comply with cost plus, you know, that 20% or 15%, you know, which, which requires profit. 
and I cannot apply comparable and control price method because comparables are not available. So what should the uh, Brazilian company do in case of losses then? And those in are case general of business losses. losses. No, you are able to apply the cost plus the, 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 the product you are negotiating, you are trading, has a cost. So you need to add a, a profit margin to this, a gross profit margin fixed by law to this cost. The point is that if after adding this profit margin, you are still deriving losses, yeah. you don't have any liability. Okay. okay? Okay. Uh, it's a calculation. Let me, me go behind just to explain. Uh, one thing that uh, I would explain here, but uh, how to deal with transfer pricing. But, but transfer pricing is applied whenever the taxpayer is subject to taxation, income taxation, based on the net adjusted net income. So if the taxpayer is deriving losses, any adjustment, transfer price adjustment, will be considered, will be added to these losses. This may, may, may lead to a positive amount or not, okay? But the losses will be able to offset any transfer price adjustment. Okay, yeah. So the conclusion is that the company should apply one of the methods and if the company has losses, it should carry certain economic adjustments and then it can say that the losses are because of these economic adjustments and hence, by pricing is at arm's length. Yeah, and the, the losses are carry, you may carry for the losses. So the, the consequence of having an adjustment in a loss position may be to have a lower balance of losses to use in, a next, in, in the next period. Okay. It will not lead to an assessment, but an adjustment of tax losses carry forward. Okay, so uh, I think we don't have any more questions. Uh, you could continue with your uh, presentation, follow with the remaining slides. Yeah, well, well what I want to, to talk now, it's about how to deal with these rules. Uh, how in practice we can uh, avoid or at least reduce the, the impacts of these rules, if any, because there are several we know we, we deal with several companies that uh, they com easily comply with the transfer pricing rules in Brazil. It's just a formal calculation that they are compliant, so it's not, it's not a problem from, from Brazilian side at all. Well, first, first thing that I, I mentioned uh, already, taxpayers are allowed to choose the less burdensome method. So taxpayers may you adopt, if possible, the three methods and to check if uh, which of them is more advantageous to the taxpayer. So this is a possibility that uh, is not found in any arms life environment. We have in US the best method and in OECD environment. You, you, you need an economic analysis, functional analysis, in order to determine the best, the most suitable methods. You don't have a best method that you need to apply each of the methods, but there is a method that is suitable, or at least more suitable for each circumstance. In Brazil, you may apply the three methods and choose the, le the least burdensome. Okay, so sometimes one method may, may lead to adjustment and another no. So this is a, a first possibility that should always be taken into consideration. Also, very important for uh, medium-sized companies, small-sized companies. Uh, companies in Brazil, are, in order to assess the income tax, are able to choose between the so-called real profit regime that is based on the adjusted net income or the deemed profit regime. What is the deemed profit regime? Is a method of calculating the income tax where you, you apply a fixed profit margin determined by law. It's optional. It's, it's, a, it's a method that uh, which intends is to simplify the income tax calculation and 
for example, even in case you have a 30% profit margin, if the law says that the, the legal, the deemed profit margin is 8%, you will calculate your income tax based on 8% profit margin. So there are several entities, companies in Brazil that choose for this method because it is, is very, very, maybe very, very advantageous in comparison to the, the, the actual uh, profit. The, pro the point here that, uh, of course, the requirements apply. And the most important one is that your revenues may not be higher than 7 to 8 million reais per year. We are talking about something around uh, 30 million dollars today, a little bit more than or, or, or less, 30, 25 to 30 million dollars today. So if your sales in Brazil is up to uh, 30, 30 million dollars, roughly, you are able to choose for this method. For transfer pricing purposes, you don't need to apply transfer pricing for import transactions. As, why is that? It's simple because what, the transfer pricing is an adjustment in your tax basis when you are, uh, you are paying tax on your adjusted net income. In this case, the, the net income, the, the, the deemed income is fixed by law. So there is no, no, no point in adding any adjustments, transfer price adjustment. So this is a strategy that is very common for a company that is, decides to start in Brazil with a distributor or a representative in, in Brazil. This may be uh, a, a very good strategy to start their activities in Brazil. Of course, you need to analyze uh, in a case-by-case -case basis because if you are deriving losses, of course, it's better to go to the, to the real profit regime because if you are deriving losses, there will be no tax to pay. But this is something that is, is, is very, very, very useful for everybody to know. Of course, this is not for major companies in Brazil. Uh, we have several safe harbor rules that have been recently changed. Uh, they have been better in the past, but they apply only for export transactions. Okay? So we have, firstly, the comparability test. test that average price charged from related parts abroad is equivalent to at least 9% of the average price charged in transactions within the Brazilian market during the same period under similar conditions, payment conditions. So what they are saying here is that you may have 10% difference between prices for export purposes that they will not, uh, you don't need to even apply a transfer pricing method. Uh, there is a immateriality test if total net revenue derived from export transactions does not exceed 5% of the total net revenues in a certain year. Uh, this is useful only for companies that are in Brazil focused in the domestic market but have, for example, not material transactions with related parts abroad. So this may be useful. Up to 5%, there is no transfer pricing. And there is another test that is profitability test that used to be only a profitability test, but now there is a, a besides profitability, there is a relevance test also. The net margin from export transactions to related parties is equivalent to at least 10%. So we are talking about net margin here. If you have 10% net margin, is the first test you have in this profitability test. In addition, net revenues for, from export transactions with related parts should not exceed 20% of the total net revenue from export transactions in general. So if the Brazilian company is exporting to other parties and 
up to 20% is for related parties. And they are able to, to make Brazil 10% uh, in net margin. In this case, you don't need to apply transfer pricing method as well. Well, the safe harbors are not applicable to transactions with uh, tax havens. So this is something, uh, transfer price in Brazil is applicable to related parties and parties located in tax haven jurisdiction. And also what we call privileged tax regime. There is a list issued by tax authorities in Brazil that uh, provides for uh, this, this list. Basically the most common uh, jurisdictions that everybody know, knows. With respect to privileged tax regime, they included certain regimes in Europe and the United States. This has been char challenged by, for example, Netherlands, Luxembourg. Uh, they, they, they said that uh, holding regimes in Netherlands would be privileged, privileged tax regime. So Netherlands challenged this by saying that no, Holding regime is an ordinary regime, but ex exemption method for uh, income derived from companies abroad. So they suspended the inclusion of uh, the, most of the European regimes that they, they had added there. Well, I, I said about these six market markups and margins maybe reviewed upon request. This is something that. Uh, should be improved by tax authorities because the, the law has recently been changed. One of the changes was to make the procedure more transparent and more clear, clearer to tax, for taxpayers. So this is something that may be used. And uh, I have dealt with circumstances in Brazil that is not usual and for sure is not ideal circumstance. But for example, with financial institutions, that they were not able to apply any of the methods with respect to specific circumstances. So we tried several approaches, but because of the peculiarities of the transaction, uh, it was not poss possible to apply any formal approach adopted by tax authorities. Uh, what they did, they prepared all the documentation in order to show that they were not able to do that. And also relying on the fact that tax authorities, in order to assess them, they would be, they, sh they, they must apply one of the methods. So they, they would not be able to apply also uh, because of the, it was very peculiar. There was no, no effective cost to be uh, attributed to the the circumstance because it was a fee between related parties in a, with respect to underwriting in a specific circumstance. So it was a specific approach. They decided to, to, it was not possible. There was no, no comparable available. Uh, they, they split the amounts in a way they believed that was correct. Almost as a, a profit split, but it was a split of revenue. And they were prepared for tax authorities to, to discuss with the tax authorities, but they were confident that tax authorities would not be able to apply any of the methods as well. So I, I hope uh, we are approaching the end of the presentation. Uh, I hope uh, we are able to provide you with an overview. I know that Brazilian tech, uh, approach is different, so there are a lot of details that could be discussed. We could have a presentation of one day in order to talk about all the details, uh, but uh, I hope I was able to provide you with uh, at least a, a, an overview of the environment you find or you find here in Brazil today. And as I said, uh, we do not foresee any major change in the future. So a, a, a more uh, complex change or a more comprehensive change, we don't expect this to, to happen at least within 10, 10 years. I may be wrong, but there is no movement whatsoever. 
uh, and also tax authorities usually confirm uh, their, their confidence in, in the, the, the approach they, 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 they had chosen. Okay, yeah. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Paulo, for uh, sharing uh, important insights uh, into Bra Bra Brazilian uh, transpassing system. And this was a very uh, uh, important presentation, uh, specifically when Brazil is a, uh, is a major country in Latin America. I just uh, want to uh, open this floor for any questions. If anyone has any question, they can text a question to us now and we will answer that question. So, Paula, there is one question, uh, which is how this BEPS action plan uh, will impact uh, the transfer passing system in Brazil. So, could you could you repeat it, please? The question is that how this BEPS action plan by the OECD, uh, okay. like on intangibles, on control over risk, how this will impact the transfer passing approach uh, taken by tax authorities in Brazil? Well, the information we have until now is tax authorities, they are, they are closely following all the developments abroad. They are even participating in most of the meetings, but uh, they are still uh, confident about the approach uh, they are adopting here in Brazil. They, they may adopt, maybe, there is nothing concrete, uh, other means to control a, a shifting of value from one, one jurisdiction to another, but one thing that I may say, for example, for you to know where we are in terms of international uh, transactions, a, a a permanent, permanent establishment in Brazil is usually not an issue. In a very few circumstances, we, we may have a permanent establishment prescribed by domestic law in Brazil. And tax authorities do not uh, assess company with respect to that. It's very difficult to see anything in Brazil that touches a, a PE discussion. So, just for you to, to see, if you are not even in a more deep discussion with respect to PE, you can imagine how far we are from all the measures that are being considered now. Probably tax authorities in Brazil will react to these changes. I, I, I believe so. Uh, they will probably, uh, I don't believe in, in a change in the transfer pricing rules in Brazil. They will probably try to add things uh, to, 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 to close doors that they, they are realizing now that are open. But being part of a, a, an international commitment to, to have everything uh, in, in a common standard, this is not what Brazil usually do, usually does. And you can see even tax treaties. Brazil is always trying to, to apply a different interpretation of the clauses that we do not follow the OECD approach. So even in case Brazil uh, adopts a, a structure of the, for example, tax treaty, a structure of the OECD tax treaties, Brazil tries to follow a different approach with respect to interpretation. So the German is here. Uh, they, do, they, they, they know exactly what I, I'm talking about. Uh, this is why the, the tax treaty between Brazil and Germany was cancelled. It's, it's also because the tax authorities in Brazil are very creative in the sense that they, they, they find ways to, to avoid to apply uh, tax treats and international standards when he, he, they believe it is, is interesting for them. Okay, yeah. Uh, thanks, Paulo, for for uh, for this explanation. Uh, so, with this, uh, uh, you know, we are closing our uh, today's presentation. And if the audience uh, still has any more question, 
they can email us on the email address given uh, on the last slide of the presentation and uh, for further information this uh, the recorded version of this presentation will be available in a week's time so if you like to revisit this presentation you can click on the link uh, which will be available on the uh, on a tps website uh, in a week's time so we thank everyone for for their patience listening and uh, we look forward to have having uh, another session uh, very soon thank you very much thank you